we're hearing about Gadi. Gadi was a priest who was performing his rituals and ablutions in the river and then saw himself fall down as if dead. He saw his body get cremated. He saw himself being reborn again in the body of a, an untouchable woman. And he, he grows old. He sees his friends die. He goes wandering. And by, through, by sh sheer chance, he ends up becoming king of a prosperous city, which he rules for eight years until the people realize his untouchable nature. They feel so polluted by him that there's no possibility of purification. So they take their own lives and he feels so desolate at this that he takes his own life as well. The sister continued. Thereafter, Gadi had become freed from the illusory vision he had. Once again, he regained his consciousness that I am Gadi. As a king, he was known as Gavala. And as a tribesman, he was known as Kartanya. He completed his religious rite and got out of the river. He continued to wonder, who am I? What did I see and how? He concluded that because he was fatigued, his mind had obviously played some tricks on him. Even as he walked away from the place, he was still contemplating the vision and inquiring into the nature of the parents, the friends and the people he had seen in that vision. He thought, surely all that was illusory, for I do not perceive anything now. In the vision he had a family. He had children, wife and children. After some days, another Brahmana visited him and Gadi duly entertained the honoured guest. During the course of their conversation, Gadi asked the guest, Sir, why do you look so tired and worn out? The guest answered, Holy One, I shall tell you the truth. There is a kingdom in the north known as Kira. I spent a month there, being lavishly entertained by the citizens. I heard an extraordinary story from them. They said a tribesman ruled this kingdom for eight years. After that, his identity became known. And on account of him, very many Brahmanas of this place perished. It was really an account of their own prejudice, but never mind. When I heard that, I too felt polluted, and hence I went to the holy place known as Prayaga, and engaged myself in severe austerity and prolonged fasting. I am breaking this prolonged fast only today. The guests spent the night with Gadi and left the following day. Gadi contemplated further. That which I saw in a hallucination, my guests saw as a factual event. Ah, I should verify the story for myself. Having thus resolved, Gadi quickly proceeded first to the place known as Buddha Mandala. Men of highly evolved consciousness can, by appropriate self-effort, attain even what they mentally visualize. Gadi thus saw, after reaching the destination, whatever he had seen in his vision. It would be interesting to ask what's meant here by highly evolved consciousness. We're familiar with the term higher states of consciousness. And perhaps highly evolved consciousness means one of these, a higher state of consciousness. But I think it simply means here his own mental prowess. He probably had a well-trained mind. And a well-trained mind is able to see its own thoughts quite clearly. It's perhaps like William Blake. It's when the imagination is exteriorized. There's little difference of any between what most of us might distinguish as the imagination and the physical world. Like William Blake, he had this ability. He saw the contents of his imagination at least as vividly as external, so-called external things. So perhaps Gadi was like that. There he saw a village which had been deeply impressed in his consciousness. He saw the very house of the tribesman himself, and he saw the very objects which were used by him. The house was in a very bad shape. 
He saw their skeletons of animals whose flesh had been eaten by the family. For some time he saw that dreadful place which looked truly like a cemetery. From there he went to the nearby village and asked the villagers, Do you know anything about that tribesman who lived in yonder house? The villagers replied, Holy sir, of course we know. There was a dreadful looking and fierce tribesman in that house who lived up to a ripe old age. When he had lost all his kinsmen, he went away and became a king of Kira and ruled for eight years. He was found out, and as a result many people died and he too killed himself. Pray, why do you ask about him? Was he related to you, or do you think you are somehow related to him? Hearing this, Gadhi was greatly puzzled. The sister continued. Gadi recognised several objects and places connected with his life in that village, where he lay intoxicated, where he slept, where he ate, the dress he wore, etc. From there, Gadi travelled to the Kira kingdom. He went to the capital city and there he inquired of the citizens, was this country ruled by tribesmen some time ago? They replied enthusiastically, oh yes, and he ruled for eight years, having been chosen by the royal elephant. When his identity was discovered, he committed suicide. It was twelve years ago. Just then he beheld the king come out of the palace with his retinue, and the king was disguised Lord Vishnu. Seeing all this, he wondered, This indeed is the kingdom of Kira, which I ruled not so long ago, which I see now as if it happened in a past birth. He asked himself, It was like a dream, yet it appears in front of me in the wakeful state. Alas, I am surely caught in the net of some sort of hallucination. I remember now that Lord Vishnu had granted me the boon that I would see his Maya. Surely this is it. He left the city at once and went to a mountain cave nearby, and there performed intense austerity. Soon Lord Vishnu appeared before him and asked him to choose any boon he liked. Gadi asked the Lord, the hallucination that I had as in a dream, how is it also seen in the wakeful state?